I said, we're going to make the click spring now. Uh, I've got this drawn in uh, fusion. I've got the tool path. Uh, tool paths are all programmed. But the trick here is how do we hold this part? Uh, and that's typically why you wouldn't do it this way, because as you can see, this is a, uh, a small part, uh, very thin and no really good way to clamp this thing. It'll be very hard to make uh, soft jaws. And that's where I'm going to use uh, this 3M tape, uh, the method I like. And one thing I've done just to add a little precaution here, and I talked about this before, is I've added three tabs on this part. Uh, because with a long part like this, when it's just getting cut out, it's likely to move on you because when you think about it, the tape is going to have nothing to hold on to. Uh, so as we put those tabs down there. It should keep it secure. Um, I've got an aluminum block that I put uh, some tape on and remove that tape. Put a piece of 125 uh, thick brass on there. And one of the trick when you want to do this 3M tape is once you remove it, clamp this. Get something, I usually put it against the table, put a seat clamp on it and clamp it down. That makes the adhesive uh, really activate and holds this uh, nice and firm. It's a pain to get off, uh, but it'll really help you out as you do machining. It's a really nice trick. Um, it allows you to make complex parts like this uh, in the CNC. Um, you're going to find as you get into this stuff, the main thing is how do you hold parts? And that's usually the trick of thinking about how do you hold parts, secure parts, uh, so you can, uh, you know, machine them out. So we'll do that. We'll get this in the mill. Uh, we'll cut it out. Uh, we'll see how it turns. Here's what we have so far. Uh, I've got the click made. I've got the click spring made. Uh, it came out nice. You can see it's a nice technique. Uh, it's got a relief on the bottom, so it shouldn't mark up the uh, frames. I've got the holes drilled and tapped. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat treat uh, this click. Also have to make a screw, um, and we got to pin this properly. So we'll get working on that, and we should get this whole uh, assembly working. Okay, so I've got the click and I've got the screw made that'll hold that onto the frame. Uh, but what I need to do now is temper the click um, and I'm gonna do that by bluing it. I'm also gonna blue the screw for aesthetic reason, also provides uh, some corrosion protection. But you'll notice on high-end clocks, when you see those blue screws, this is how they do it. What I'm doing is different. Typically you'll see people heating them in a brass tray, but I'm gonna try to do it in an oven. Uh, I've got this oven set to 530. And if you look at the bluing charts, around 530, 545 is the right temperature. But what I've done is I've put a stone in here. I've got two thermocouples in that stone. Uh, so I, I'm getting the average temperature of that stone on this readout. Um, so you can see right now, uh, that stone is running 541 degrees, almost 42 degrees. I want it around 540, so this is good. Uh, I've been regulating, it's got a good thermal mass. So we'll put these in, I'll put a little tin foil over them. And let's see if this works. So let's look at what we've got here. Um, I've got the uh, the click in, click spring, ratchet wheel in place. You can see the bluing. It, it came out pretty well. Uh, looks like I didn't have the click uh, perfectly clean, so I can redo that. But I really liked how that came out. I think uh, it's a technique I might use when I go and do all these screws. Uh, it looks like it's a more predictable way to uh, get these uh, parts blue and a lot of them blue at once. So nice tip. Um, I'm sure it'll get better when we try it next time. So if you see how this works, you can see a pretty nice motion and looks well. You see this clock is going to want to run. You've got to put the, uh, the escapement on and I'm gonna start working on the pendulum next and then we'll, we'll see how she goes.